Hey guys, it's Anne. If you're new to this channel, this is a home worm farming channel. And if you're looking for an active, helpful community that supports anyone in need of worm advice, you are in the right place. Today we're looking in on some of my worm bin experiments. I love science and I love debunking myths. One is where the bin doesn't receive any grit. And second, I'm weighing everything I put in and all the moisture loss every month. First of all, we are going to look at the no grit bin, which started with 100 cocoons in October of 2022. They get my normal bedding with the exception of grit. And let's see how they're doing today. So far, they have seemed like a normal bin. This looks super dry. Um, for some reason, it is very high humidity in the the basement right now but for some reason the top of this looks really dry so i am probably just going to move this dry stuff off and get that wet in a bucket before i add it back to the bin i have had a fan going in the basement because i have seedlings started down here and that might have contributed to the bin being super dry that i'm willing to bet there's no worms in that top part so i can feel pretty confident moving that out so that I can get it wet again. Oop, isopod siding. So let's have a look and see what we did. I don't know which side we fed on. So we're just gonna start digging in here. Now these worms, there was no worms in here to start with. These all came from the 100 cocoons and they have been breeding really good. I can't believe how fast they have uh, turned into a working population in here. Since the, you know, the population timing for red wigglers is generally about three months, I shouldn't be as surprised as I am. Oop, dancing worm. Not to be confused with jumping worms. I have yet to find them here in my area. But since, let's see, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So we're looking at possibly three generations of worms in here. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised that I have so many worms. It's been about a month since we've looked in on these guys. And I think we had a mix of slow food and fast food. So let's, let's see what we've got going. I bet that's generation one. Look at that beautiful worm beautiful yellow tail that's characteristic of the red wigglers and you can see a clitellum here which tells you it's mature all right flipping things over still you can tell the food was over here that's where most of the castings are and most likely where the worms have been hanging out looks like they're getting into that avocado pit so that looks like the only thing that is recognizable from the last feedings with the exception of the avocado skin so I'm gonna put that back and I'm gonna completely homogenize this bin to get the castings and everything together. And we will put the, the dry bedding that has been re-moistened back in after it's sat in the bucket for a little while. All right, so let's, let's move these guys over. I have some wet bedding that I wanna give them. It's new, but uh, that's what I have wet and prepared right now for their feeding. So, this is just my normal prepared bedding. In fact, there's really not any coconut coir in here because uh, I used it all for seed starting. I'm gonna have to get a new brick. If you do like using coconut coir as a method to keep the paper apart, I do have a link in my Amazon links below uh, where you can get that. It helps the paper and the cardboard from gluing themselves together. Since these have been such good worms, they're going to get a good handful of melon rinds today. They finished all of their food. Why shouldn't they get dessert, right? Now this bin has been going without grit and they've been eating the food just fine. I'm thinking that this year might be the year that I call this myth debunked, mm. that you do not need to add grit every time you feed. Uh, that being said, uh, I actually have somebody who eats a lot of eggs in my household, so honestly, the grit's got to go somewhere. So I do grind it up and I do add it to my bedding, my normal bedding, not this one. And I also put it in all my other worm bins because the plants will use it eventually. Okay, so let me go get that bedding that has been sitting in a bucket of water and put it back in. 
there we go. All that old bedding that was dry is now all wet again. And so hopefully the worms will be able to get into that this time. I'm going to cover this up this time because apparently that fan is drying things out down here, or at least it's drying out the worm bins. So hang on. Now we go on to the weight experiment. Here is the second experiment. This is the weight bin. It was started six months ago and it has had quite a bit of food. I will put the notes down below as to how many food that we have added. And I will also put notes down below as to how much weight we have lost as far as moisture total to this point. Now, at this point right now, it weighs 21.8 pounds. Uh, cannot do this on the scale in front of you right now because the part where I normally shoot these bins is actually a plant nursery, which I'll show you a little picture of as well. So 21.8, that seems to me like it's lost quite a few pounds. So let's look, I got springtails galore in here. Uh, the bin looks a little dry, really. Maybe when we get it all mixed up, I'm not sure what we're going to find. But all of this flex is uh, grit, it's not the, the bugs. So just looking for food right now. This part looked the wettest, so I thought I would start there to see if that was what was causing that part of the bin to be more damp. I did leave this uncovered as well, so um, maybe that's not a good idea with the fan going in the basement. Good amount of worms here. Looks like they're doing very good getting at the castings, or making castings out of the food. Got our big old avocado pits. See if we've got any food over here. Ah, yeah, there's a pineapple top here. They and the springtails have gotten to the center of it, so that's nice. I kind of thought that, oh, it looks like we're getting another avocado tree. I don't really need another avocado tree. I think I have about five or six now. I think I'm just gonna let the worms eat that one. But it doesn't look like I'm seeing anything with the exception of the banana stem and those avocado pits and the tomato skins, which for some reason seem to take forever. So we've got the one top. We know that pineapple is going to take forever. So that is all we've got in here with the exception of a couple of sprouts. So I think this calls for a really good feeding today. So I'm going to move everything aside here, put the old food down first so that it can have the benefit of the nice juice from the new food as well as from the new wet bedding that they're going to get. All right, since I don't have the scale in front of me, I'm just going to tell you that I'm adding one pound of shredded paper and cardboard, and then I'm adding 2.4 pounds of water. All right, so we'll take half of that, and then we will put the food down right here, which totals 3.5 pounds. So that's bread, mango, got some orchid stems in here, more bread, got some pasta. This has all been previously frozen, avocados, bananas. So this is a really good healthy feeding, onions. It will all eat. I'm gonna put the bread down low so that it can absorb the moisture because if it's dry when it goes in the bin, it will honestly turn hard as a rock. So then we're gonna put this bedding on top here. And then I'm going to backfill the top of this with some of the, the castings from before. That will help them get started. If you're new to worm farming, that is one of the things that is super helpful to get your bin started with new bedding, because that bedding didn't have anything in it except for paper and cardboard. One of the things you can do to get the worms to eat faster is to take some castings from your bin and add it to your prepared bedding before you feed it, about a week or so, and then the bedding will get started being eaten and then your worms don't have such a hard time eating the food. If you like these experiments and when I debunk myths, I have a whole playlist that I will put over here. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.